Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by the one and only Paul Tierney, and we're here to discuss the League of Ireland Premier Division. This is episode three, three, uh, well, three kind of four games in um, at this race. First game up is the big one of the season so far. Um, what a game it was! Sean McGovern's three, Dundalk two. Um, you were obviously at Talca Park, but what were your kind of when you were seeing so many goals? What were your thoughts? Origin, uh, originally originally uh, thoughts were people were talking about it in the media box anyway it's like oh what scores Rovers and even with our Twitter feed as well we were able to notify some of the lads there when Rovers went 3-2 up it was constantly being watched even though you were at a different game because it was such a massive game with such a big crowd at it as well and it delivered simple as yeah early doors I thought it was going to be one of those games where both teams sat back and it wasn't going to be a lot of chances taken, but both sides were really going for it. Like, I couldn't believe my eyes when when the way things were panning out the way it were. Like, both it was very end to end, especially very early on. And you know, obviously it finished three two, but you wouldn't have really expected it to go that way at all. Like, you were thinking maybe one nil or one all. That was kind of what you were thinking, you know? Yeah, true. I think even speaking to Vinnie Pert last week, he seemed like they were going to set up kind of solid, especially against Rovers away from home. Because the point wouldn't have been a bad one for them there, really. But uh, again, both teams went for it. So much quality in both sides as well. It's no surprise there was that many goals, to be honest. But as you said, it started kind of like that. And I think once one goal goes in, the team has to chase it anyway so and I think it's just in Rover way, the way Rovers play is to go and get more goals anyway especially after getting six last week against Cork so no surprise yeah well I mean the first goal it wasn't a great goal in terms of the, the like you know kind of landed to Dylan Watts and he put it into the empty net um, it was a good bit of play by uh, Brian and Finn to, to get it to where it was but um, you know, obviously look it doesn't matter how they go win once they go win and Dylan Watts won't care I think he's I think he's found it difficult with the new midfielders coming in because there's been so many that have came in mm. while he's been there. Like he obviously came from Bowes as the star of Bowes, and you know a lot of Bowes fans were really unhappy that he left. The manner in which he left because he obviously was at uh, Bowes for a bit. I think it was on loan, and then when his loan finished up, he signed with uh, Shamrock Rovers. Or I could be wrong. He could have his, his deal with um, Leicester. I think may have, may have come to an end, one or the other, either way. But he was at Bowes. And then he went to the the enemy in Rovers and came in with a reputation that he was going to be the star man. And then, of course, Byrne came in and Gary O'Neill's came in and a few others. And I think he's shown a great amount of character to get back in the team and be one of the first choice players, you know. So credit to him. And as I say, he took his goal well. But, I mean, Dundalk bounced back almost straight away. What a goal it was. Yeah. I, but as I was saying there on the live show just before we started, it didn't look as good from where I was sitting at the time. In real time, it didn't look as good as obviously it looks unbelievable. In Like, you were sitting there going, wow, what a goal. Yeah. But you didn't appreciate how good it was till you watch it back. I think that's more what I'm trying to say without sounding like yeah. I'm disregarding it because I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like even how viral it went as well. And you see the different angles of it. When you see them, especially the one from the Rover South Stand, it's incredible. That's the one that went out today, was it? Yeah, the one that went out. It's an incredible strike. You know, it has to be up for the postcast at least, unless there's something that beats that in the next few next few months. But I don't see it happening. Yeah, but there's honest. so many people like retweeting, like like Peter Crouch and all saying goal of the season and stuff like that. So when you see like that stuff like that in the league getting so much publicity. I said, uh, I put it out on Twitter the other day that the um, Dundalk should be all over the fact that it was mentioned on Soccer AM, you know, and as you say, FIFA recognised that for a Puskas award. Mm. Should we try to get Bullard over to do something with Flores or Dundalk or do a you know the drill with the club? It would be massive. Yeah. I think it would bring a lot more eyes to the league as well. I just, they didn't really seem to, to capitalise on it. Maybe they have in the background without saying something and something might happen in the next one, which I hope it does yeah. because I think it would be stupid. I know, look, it's a, it's a, it's a loss for, for Dundalk in terms of the results, but they could get a lot of publicity out of it if they were to be a bit more savvy on the social media front, you know? 100%. Like it's, it was on all TV shows. It was on Sky Sports News. They showed it on Gillette. 
even match of the day two last night was in there too good too bad which is amazing for us you know and even with the crowds we've gotten the first few weeks in the whole league to get a big bit of publicity like that as well in the next few weeks would be great not just for Dundalk but for the league itself like you just said yeah, yeah well on to kind of the, the field um, the game itself Aaron Green had like easily the best chance of the game um, obviously other than the goals he went one on one I think Burns set him free and he was one on one with uh, Gary Rogers and he opened his body so much on his left foot that he just ended up hitting a wide whereas I thought he maybe should have went across the keeper with his right foot mm. um, if you haven't seen it on the TV already but it was it was a bad miss and, yeah. I, and I think with Dundalk getting the second goal I think it showed the difference between the two strikers Huben goes in one on one like that and thinks Alaman is a great finish yeah. I think it went a little bit unnoticed um, how good of a finish and the pressure it was at yeah. that point because it was early end to end but it did look like whoever was going to get that goal was going to go on to win it now obviously they didn't but at the time you were thinking okay well Dundalk are going to go on now and maybe get one or two more but Rovers to their credit bounced back and I at the time didn't see Rovers getting back into it and um, Roberto Lopez rising like a, a fish out of water um, to head the home it a real bravery to, to get on the end of that goal like, and he got his reward for it you know yeah. obviously the equaliser and that set them on their way then but again I, I, I couldn't have foreseen the, the end of the game the way it did it was brilliant yeah quality and even Jack Burns scoring the winner that, that goal because Flores' one was so good, maybe didn't get talked about as much. It's such an important goal and it's a cracking finish from him as well. Easily up there as maybe the best player in the league, probably is. But again, he showed his class and it's a fantastic win for Rovers. They probably needed to win. It's important that they did win. I know they have to play Dundalk again and so on. Bowls to the important games. But again, very important win for Rovers. Yeah, I think that, that like it was a point made that They've beaten Bowes now, they've beaten Dundalk now this season, which they struggled to beat them in previous seasons. Yeah. More so maybe last year when they kind of needed to get the bigger result. Now, I think that's because they have obviously invested in their squad. They've got players like Graham Burke back, and I know Gary O'Neill um, obviously had a family bereavement, and he wasn't involved as well, which was a big loss, him yeah. and Burke anyway. And then they had Rory Gaffney came on, and he made a huge difference yeah. for them, and everybody was raving about him. Um, Another very, very good player. I think now Rovers and Stephen Bradley are really building a really good side there. You think of Pico Lopez, Lee Grace, and Joey O'Brien. He went off early enough. He went off in the 12th minute, but he's so key to what they do. If you've talked to any of the Rovers players, they all go on about how much of an influence Joey O'Brien yeah. is. I think that's what Bradley's done. He's really brought in great characters. And you look at Dundalk's team, the fact that they've lost players like Benson and McGrath, who were... I suppose big players to them um, and they're bringing in newer players like Sloggett and stuff like that I think maybe it's going to take them a couple of games but I think that they'll go, they will start on their real class in the next few games not that they've been bad but I just think they'll go on to do better things like I mean, Flores scored two crackers in the last two weeks as well um, Huben scoring goals yeah. uh, he's just going to continue to keep scoring goals unless he gets injured so Dundalk still have all that as well, you know, they still have Daniel Cleary, Brian Gartland there in the defence as well, as well, so they're not like lacking in terms of players, I think on the night Rovers yeah. turned them over and I suppose psychologically it's, just, um, it's an edge for them to show, so since the cup final they, they've got a bit of a psychological edge now I think on what just, I, don't, I just mean in terms of the game, I don't mean in terms of oh, on the league, I mean I don't think they would have done that last year. So yeah. Since they won the cup, they have that little bit of psychological yeah. where they believe that they can go out and actually get the results against teams that they probably didn't have before. But I think that's down to the players that they've brought in. And Stephen Bradley deserves big credit for that. Yeah, definitely big time. I mean, the cup win is crucial for them. And I think we all kind of put an eye to them then saying this, this is a kickstart for them. And then four wins out of four, they've shown their class already. They've got to maintain it now, though. That's the most important thing. Like every team will be looking to beat them now as well, take points off them even. So that's the pressure now. Yeah, but and and just in terms of Jack Byrne, obviously Mick McCarthy was in the game there, and um, everyone said he left three minutes before the goal was scored. You obviously would have seen it on uh, on TV 
or on his taxi or wherever he was, yeah. whatever chariot he was on uh, <laughs> going home. But do you think there's a realistic chance that Jack will get called up? Oh, definitely. I mean, he's been in the squads already, even like I, he played against New Zealand, but he was still in the squad for the Denmark game. And that was a really important game as well. I think he's been around the squad for the last few call-ups now as well. So I think definitely have him in there. And he's got the quality uh, uh, on the ball, off the ball as well. He should definitely be involved. And if we have to bring him on, say we're losing 1-0, he could probably even grab us a goal, set up a goal as well. I mm-hmm. definitely think he should be involved. The only thing is, I think it's going to be between himself and Jason Knight for that final position. And you're kind of looking at that, going yeah. to go for. Yeah, so it's true. a tough one. I'll leave that to you in the, in the audience for that one. Um, I love Jack and, uh, and I caught up with him after the game. You can hear what he has to say here. Jack Byrne after a 3-2 victory over Dundalk for Shamrock Rovers. Jack, uh, first half, what were your thoughts? Um, because you had to kind of reshuffle a bit with Joey O'Brien going yeah, on for I you. Think like, uh, I think obviously on the goal up was great. Do you know what I mean? Um, I just think um, the wind uh, was a big factor after after we uh, we went one up. And, you know, they're a strong side and they played their strengths. They used the the conditions well and uh, put pressure on us like you know but look we wetted it and then obviously conceded a goal after the second half early doors uh, and then we had to win you know what I mean we started playing our football yeah. you know, thought, thought we were brilliant like, what, were your, really what were your thoughts when, when Pat Huben obviously scored that it was a great goal he, he ran in. it's sick to be honest because uh, thought we were playing well at the time and it's probably my fault to be honest I gave the ball away um, trying to hit a Dijag I probably shouldn't have Tried to hit I probably should have just went with. Um, but look, you give the ball away against good teams like this, they're going to punish it. And it was sick to be honest because I thought we were playing well at the time. I thought we were, uh, thought we were controlling the game. We were using the weather then to our advantage and um, playing our game. And uh, look, it's just one of those things that uh, we can say it early in the second half. Week. Yeah, and then get, obviously getting back into it, I think it showed good, good character from. Yourselves, because you know a lot of people would have said last year maybe we would have crumbled under that. Now this season, you just kind of have a little bit of a psychological edge after the cup yeah, final. I don't think so. I just think it's like they're the top seed, uh, top side, they're uh, champions of Ireland for a reason. Um, do you know what I mean? We're, we're trying to close the gap. We're trying to uh, hopefully one day get past them. But they're the top side. They're unbelievable players. So. Uh, Look, it's not a psychological advantage or anything like that. It's just that we we, we trust what we do and we, we, we played well tonight in patches. Um, probably controlled most of the game. I think it was probably a fair result. Yeah, just just the goal. Uh, talk me through what was going through your mind at the time. Great finish, by yeah, the way. He's a top player, Luke. And I want to get a bit of stick out to the Dundalk fans are always leading up to this game. Chris Shields and Javi in our back pocket, all this stuff. So, look, it was uh, it was nice for me personally to just you know, get him on the half time for probably the one time in the game that he left let me go. So um I'm happy with how I'm over the ball. I, I, I work on that a lot, you know, the little uh, stop start and, and uh you know I was happy with it. Yeah, on left foot as well? Yeah, swinger. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one at luck, it was uh, lucky. Well lucky I practice it but they don't come in from toward the yard so yeah. that often, you know what I mean? So look I'm happy with it but I, I won't be hitting one like that again anytime soon, I wouldn't say so. Look, it's good night. Yeah, and just lastly, then obviously the, the squad's going to be announced for for Ireland in the next two weeks. Yeah, I'm not even thinking about it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, without jumping too far ahead, but you've done yourself no harm, is all I was going to say. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to do as well as I can for myself. And uh, look, it's a, it's not a stupid question because everybody asks us, but everybody wants to be involved. There's every, every single player in this country would want to be involved in that game, you know, in Ireland or if you're playing in England. So, uh, look. Of course, I want to be involved. Every kid's dream to be involved in games like that. But look, whether I will or not, it's not it's not in my hands. All I can do is, uh, you know, try and play well and try and try and do what I do. Yeah, and, and I know just the last but like just the the crowd tonight, the fact that it's packed, great game of football yeah. from both sets of uh, teams. You know what yeah, I mean? It just proves that there's great quality in the what league. The you league know, needs. it needs nights like that. It needs you know crowds like that. Eight thousand people at the game tonight, and and it's on TV. And five uh, goals. Yeah, it's unheard of, and, and uh, I'm sure everyone that came here tonight will be uh, will be looking to come back, but they want to be coming back and watching quality football like that. Um, so look, it's uh, the potential's there. We all want it. Um, it's just where I guess the back now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, Jack. I won't keep you too long. Yeah. Enjoy your night. All right, well done. Thank you. See you. As you see there, Jack Byrne obviously delighted to get that uh, monkey off the back, and he took, he's been taking a lot of stick off the dog fans regarding Chris Shields and having them in his back pocket. So. He got one up on him this time around, but as he said, it was the only time in the game that he got away from Chris Shields. Also kind of played down the Ireland uh, the, the Ireland talks, but I think he's just doing that in general. 
yeah uh, because so many people are saying to him and everybody's saying the same stuff to him like he's definitely going to be in contention or like there thereabouts the fact that he, i seen him coming out and saying that he only really took two weeks off and he's been straight back into it so i think that will work to his testament he's shown that he's not like looking at any sign any sort of rust or anything like that he's been quality since he got on, he's been on the score sheet two weeks in a row now as well yeah. he's been quality uh it was a shame that I think maybe Michael Duffy didn't shine as bright as he normally would because maybe he might have been looked at. The yeah. fact that McLean's out now and you know we could probably use maybe Robinson on the right and we don't really have anyone on the left. That might have you know swayed in his favour a little bit and it was just a shame that he didn't have one of those nights maybe like he did in Oriel Park when they won the league. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I agree. And I think uh, what you're saying about Jack Byrne as well, I think it's just natural for a player to play down international call-ups, especially in our league. Uh, I still think he should be involved anyway at least and i think he will be but again as you said about duffy too he's uh it's just one of them nights it's top of the table clash sometimes it just doesn't happen for you it shines for other lads as well but again we we all know how good duffy is and i think he'll, he'll be back at it this weekend mm. well, i think it is worth noting he did set up the floor as goal. i think that's worth yeah oh yeah 100 100 that corner um which is a great ball by the way michael if you're watching <laughs> But uh, yeah, on, on to this talk park then. Shelburne and St. Pat's. You were at the game. Um, talk to me about it. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, even coming up to Talca, up the Drumconda Road, it was a real derby field with fans on both sides of the road. Pat's fans were making a load of noise. Some of them coming in late as well, just after kickoff, giving it socks to the Shells fans on that side as well. Uh, the teams, Kilduff and Luke Byrne, were out for Shells, which was a bit of a worry going into it being Shells fan myself. But uh, Oscar Brennan slotted right back in, had an excellent game, was stuck in right from the word go, like all the players were, well up for it. Um, and then Aaron Dobbs came in first start for him as well, up front with uh, Shane Farrell too. And the two of them done really well, worked very hard. Dobbs played the whole game, Farrell went off a bit earlier. But again, they worked their socks off and ultimately, Pats did have a lot of possession, but they had no killer instinct. That's what it was, whereas Shells took their chance when they got it. Bit of a surprise, ja- Jazz Cabby off a corner. Great finish though, all the same. But a uh, great win for Shells, and I feel thoroughly deserved because they were solid. Pats didn't really create anything clear cut. It was all kind of half chances, shots outside the box, and that's credit to Shells, really. Yeah, I think that's that goes back down to um, the Waterford game where Pats played Waterford and they were battering Waterford, battering Waterford, battering Waterford, but couldn't score the goal. And Brian Murphy it was had an unbelievable game that night. Um, but again, it's it's Pats have really good players in their team, but they just don't have the that player to score that goal. I think Mikey Renham was doing it early last season. Uh, this season, Hale has been on the course, you know, Forrester as well. But I suppose Hale will be more of a striker than Forrester, might be more just a, like a number ten. Um, he'll score five to ten goals a season and they love like half of them be worldies yeah. but he doesn't score regularly enough like in a game like that where pats are probably the favorites you know you, you talk about Kilduff and luke Byrne being out that's a massive massive result for shells having yeah. two big players like that out who are crucial to getting shells up last season Definitely. and um you know i spoke to my cousin yeah yesterday who's a massive shells fan as well and he said oscar brennan came in done brilliantly aaron dobbs works his socks off for the team and and that's the type of thing Gary Deegan I believe was amazing as well midfield was just controlling everything yeah. just giving the ball off simple and you know you look at Shell's results so far a 1-0 win away to Cork, to Cork yeah um, then they played Dundalk unlucky not to get a point against Dundalk yeah. I, think, I think everybody even yeah. Dundalk fans will say that yeah. and then going and beating Pats who I think a lot of teams have struggled to beat this year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as, as you mentioned, like they're very good in possession and stuff like that. I mean, the possession is 58% to Shells, 41, or nearly 42%. But like the Pats had 10 shots, Shells had five. Yeah. So as you say, they didn't have the killer instinct, but Shells did. And that, again, it's it's grinding out those results, but also keeping clean sheets. That's two 1 0 wins now so far this season yeah. of their wins. Um, Obviously, Dundalk. Are, are, are Dundalk are a different quality yeah, full time so exactly like the, ter- the 30 minutes where Dundalk got their goals in, in Talca they were class above and it showed but Shells rallied really well and got back into it that day and I think they'll be looking to make Talca a fortress this season 
and I think it's definitely possible. It's going to be a really tough place to win for all the teams, like you've just said yourself. Well, the good thing about it is, when you look at it, it's that they're selling out two weeks in a row now. Yeah. They're selling out. The pictures uh, that she has putting up, the social media game is really, really strong. And it's getting people believing again. And it's getting fans back exactly. to the stadium. And that's what that's what Chelsea's need is to keep doing that. And even Vinnie Perth said it last week. He hopes that they keep continuing to do that because you know it's it's that old school ground. You know the fan base. The club's gone through a horrible um, woes over the years, especially. You know, we're not getting to motors and so on. Never really recover from it. Only seems to be really recovering now. Yeah. Without getting carried away, just need to keep grinding out results like that. And I think having the squad that Ian Morris has assembled has been vital to that. And I think he's a really good mix of youth and experience, which is great. And it's getting them over the line in games. As you've yeah. seen, you were at the game yourself. And just grinding out those results. Carl Shepard and these types of people who know how to win games in this league, he's brought in Gary Deegan, you know, Kilduff, Byrne. These are all players who have played at top clubs and know how to win and know how to grind out results. And I think that maybe goes a little bit unnoticed for fans, is that he's bought players with great mentalities into Shelburne. Yeah. Whereas I think other people maybe have weaker mentalities at other clubs. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, oh no, definitely, I completely agree. I think the the mix, as you've said, is great. Like, you look at Jazz, he's only 19, 20, 19, yeah. 20. Yeah, so like... Shane I mean, Farrell. Shane Farrell. Denzel. Yeah, young lads, like, playing in and getting to play with Gary Deegan. He's played in the championship, you know, that's that's experience right there. And they'll be learning right off the bat. And clearly they have two wins out of three so far is amazing for them. Yeah, now we've spoken about Pat, or sorry, Shelburne in a positive light, but Pat's, how... Other than scoring goals, what more could they have done? That that's it really. Like they dominated. I know let's not be super goals win yeah. games, we all know yeah. that, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah dominated the ball, we're pl- playing very tidy stuff. Forrester was uh, knocking the ball around great with the rest of the lads. I think ultimately they may have got a goal, but the red card killed it. It did kill it, and Shells were just solid after that. Like again, it was still only half chances coming through for Pats and Again, it's just that killer instinct. That's all that's missing for them. And you've seen them against Waterford exactly the same on Friday against Jeff. Yeah, but they look, see, the thing is, and I, I said this, is that they would, they would beat other teams because Waterford, you know, are very strong. But it's, it's mad, like, because then Waterford go and lose to Bowes. Derry then beat Bowes. You know, it's just mm. a mad league in terms of results. So that's why I'm not getting carried away by any stretch of the imagine, imagination that, you know, Shells are going to start going on a big mad run hopefully they do yeah but you know uh, at the same time you've got to be realistic because you're only ever one win uh, one win away from a loss now look at Finn Harps Shells mm. were blessed probably not to get not to have to go up to Bally Buffet that time yeah on yeah. Monday yeah um, after playing Dundalk because if they had they went up there maybe lost and they came and they're playing Pats they're on a bit of a downward spoil so yeah. the fact that now they're kind of they've bounced straight back from the Dundalk feet, defeat and now they're um, on course again now next week they, they play Bowes on Friday night in Daly Mount which they'll be looking to get revenge for last season for yeah. the 3-2 definitely definitely which is painful but what I'm saying is um, like Cork beating Finn Harp is obviously a huge result for Shells as well because Cor- Shells have already beaten Cork now Cork are beating Finn Harp so it's just getting yeah I know it's only three games in with, with yeah. Shells but like these type of things are the things that get you over the line at the end of the season but again it's all about momentum and keeping that in terms of St. Pat's I just hope they start picking up results I like St. Pat's and um, I don't have any fears about the relegation boys but if they want to have a decent season I think they're going to have to uh, start putting the ball in the back of the net so it'll be interesting to see how they get on this week now they're playing um, Cork at home is it? At Cork, yes, Cork. Cork City at home so that's a game they're well capable of winning but Ch- or Cork will be coming up high on confidence after getting that win last week yeah um, but they don't really score many goals either, so it'll be interesting to see what score actually turns out to be. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it, it's an important game for both of them as well. And it was like, Pat's got the result against Sligo, Cork winning their first game. It's important to see, can they both kick on from this now? And that's the main thing we're looking at there. Paul Dini here with Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined with Carl Shepard after Shelburne's 1-0 win against Pat's at Talca Park. Carl, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it was a hard game. It was... Uh... I think we probably sat in a little bit too much for what we would have liked, but Pats are a good team, they moved the ball well and 
look, we took our goal well and we probably could have had one or two more. Yeah, uh, you set up the goal for Jays, obviously. Are you on free kicks now for the season yourself? <laughs> I can't be giving that away, but uh, <laughs> for now, anyway. <laughs> and is there anyone on Jays? Jays himself, he got injured there in the second half. Uh, I haven't a clue yet. No. And uh, next week, balls away. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, look, it's another Dublin derby, so it'll be good to go up there and hopefully... Look, the way we're playing, we're hard to beat at the moment. We just need to hopefully bring a bit more playing into our style of play. But look, we're confident going into it. Perfect, Kat. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. I'm Gavin Dalton. Joining me here tonight is Shell's attacker, Aaron Dobbs. Aaron, big Dublin derby tonight. How important was three points? Yeah, look, it's it's always great to win a, win a derby, especially when it's the first one of the season, gets on track. Uh, big three points and... Yeah, it's always nice to turn over Pats, whether it be the first game of the season, last game of the season, it's always nice to overturn them. So, yeah, happy with the result. Uh, Ian Morris spoke earlier about making Tulka Park a bit of a fortress. Your fans had a big role to play tonight, didn't they? Yeah, look, the fans have, have been fantastic. Only three games in, you can see the numbers are out already. So, we, just, we keep going for the season, keep building momentum, getting three points there and there, and uh, yeah, hopefully keep building and attract everyone else to come, come out as well. You're without Kieran Kilduff, one of your main guys tonight. Did that put extra pressure on you to perform today? Uh, no, look, Killer, he spoke to me before the game. I knew he struggled all week in training. He hasn't been, he's been in and out, touching base. So, uh, no, look, Killer, he's, he's reassured me. He's done homework on the centre halves. He knows him. He's been in the league so long. He uh, just gave me tips on what to do. and he, he backed me. But no, look, Killer, he's a big help. You know, when look as a rivalry, it's more of a friendship. He just helps me and gives me tips every day. Bows away next week. You'll be hoping to carry this momentum into the next week. Yeah, look, it's probably the biggest game in, in Dublin at the moment. I saw some bows and overs maybe, but now nah, look, it's a sellout daily amount of wise because you want another three points off it. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks for that. Sir, Cheers. So, um, up at the Brandywell then, Derry City 2, Bohemians nil, which was a shock result. I had actually... Um, backed Bowes to win 2-1 I think in my, in my preview on uh, on Twitter I said it was going to be wrong anyway so Derry City <laughs> fans don't eat the head at me there's one guy called Tristan who always likes to give it to me when I get something wrong about Derry so I hope you enjoyed your three points Tristan um, I'd appreciate the share that as well uh, Stephen Mallon won their goal by the way I think that's because Jordan Flores goal was so good for the lot I think the one about Mallon Gets overlooked. Pfft, unreal golf. Yeah. He ran by about five players and smashed the home on his debut. Like you, as far as debuts go, they don't get much better than that. Yeah, no, definitely not. Especially for a team who only got one point out of two games so far as well. It's a great goal and a great start for him as well. And great win for Derry too. Yeah. See, the thing about D Derry is it's just these inconsistencies that they always seem to have. But the Brandywell always seems to be a fortress for them, mm. where, you know, they, they always, I remember this time last year, they were getting mad results. They were going out and losing the Rovers one week, and then they spanked someone to 7-1 or something. Uh, they, they have it in them to win up in the Brandywell, and then sometimes just don't show when they come down to, say, Dublin or other parts of the country. I do think that they are a quality side, but as I said, these inconsistencies again. But I think if you're looking around their midfield, like you got Clifford, McCarthy, a few of these other players in, obviously Malins came in from Sheffield United. He's, again, I go back to Michelle, some players with good mentalities. I think these players that he's brought in have that mentality as well know how to if they're in front in games they know how to go into results and I think that's going to be massive for the season yeah definitely especially for Derry you consider Derry and Bowles maybe Pats as well the teams who are going to be fighting for a third maybe and it's in the, Derry obviously started slow brought in a few new lads maybe they were just kind of gelling but it's important that they got that win and got over the line against the team who's they're going to be right up against this year as well yeah and and look Bowles again I mean, they lost to Rovers, mm. bounced back, beat Waterford, then they beat um, Sligo, yeah. and now they go up to the Brandywell and lose. I think, I think that's a massive uh, loss for them because they're obviously looking to keep momentum up. They, got ba they bounced back, they got two wins in a row, they would have been looking for the third, but they want to they go, I think, maybe one better this year, maybe 
win a cup or finish higher in the league. Or yeah. maybe you finish, you talk about Rovers closing the gap under that. Maybe Bowes want to close the gap on the top two. So it's not as big now. Yeah. Um, and it's just vital that they win these types of games. They've got a quality squad. They've added great players, brought back a lot of players who they had to let go the season previous. In the summer, they had to let a lot of players go. The likes of JJ Looney and Dan Casey, you know, if they've gotten back now. Mm. And quality players. So it's, it's just... I was shocked when I seen the results because I think Bowes are, are capable of going up there and getting a result. Yeah. And if you're, if you're serious about uh, wanting to go that next step, and they're doing everything right in terms of marketing and stuff. They're doing everything right on off the field in that regard. It's just a matter of getting that those results. Like that, that for them, I think Keatland would be very disappointed not to get go up there and get a win. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like even before Derry got their goal, they Bowles did miss a chance. It was cleared off the line brilliantly by one of the Derry defenders. But again, I mean, they've got to take these chances. We seen them against Sligo a few weeks ago as well on the Monday night. And although they did win 2-0 and it seems like it was kind of comfortable, they missed a load of chances that night as well. So maybe that's kind of affecting them too, that side of yeah, it. Yeah, I think the yeah. pitch didn't help that night in Daily yeah. Man, though. Yeah, true. We were, we were yeah. allowed and Dan Mandreau said after the game, like he wasn't, uh, you know, he was trying to play uh, Glenn McCauley and how he didn't score that night as well. Um, it was beyond me. He, he was so close numerous yeah. times. But that could be a thing. They could be suffering a little bit like St. Pat's in terms of just can't get the ball in the net when... They probably should, and that's they got punished then with the counter attack at the end. And Walter Figu- uh, Figuera, that's how you say it. Figuera, <laughs> yeah, uh, with a lovely chip goal over Stephen McGuinness, who's done well since he's been in goal because when he, he kept two clean sheets before that, it's Waterford and Sligo, and then conceded to. I don't think any of the goals were really his fault, no, definitely. So, um, but he, he was brilliant at Cadentini last year, so it's good to see him getting his chance. I imagine James Talbot will be back soon, but as I said, I don't think the keeper could have really done anything about it. But uh, Bowles would be looking now to bounce back, obviously, against Shelburne. Obviously, we won't want that to happen. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they'll be looking, obviously, to bounce back against Shells now this week. And it would be interesting to see how Shells can, can do against Bowles in daily moments as well. And, look, these are going to be looking to hop off Shells. Let's, let's not kid yeah. ourselves, you know. Yeah, especially, like, after last year as well with Shells leading 2-0 and losing that, they had that lead late on. I know Jazz can be a red card, had an effect. But, again... Both sides will be well up for it. Dublin Derby be exactly like last week with Pats too, Shells. So it's going to be an interesting game anyway. Yeah, and then the last game, because obviously Sligo and Waterford was postponed due to weather warnings and so on, which uh, I've never seen so many games postponed in uh, this stage of the season. Yeah, we've had we've had a lot of bad weather recently. That was like I can see it. Global warming. Well, yeah, we won't get into that. But uh, yeah. Very bad weather at the minute. It's disappointing for them as well because teams kind of lose momentum then, you know, that they're kind of buzzing for the game and then lose the momentum. It's disappointing, especially for two sides who are probably going to be down towards the end of the table. But again, I it's don't important. know about Waterford uh, at yeah. the moment. I think they, they've got enough quality there. I just think they maybe had a bit of a slip up against both. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think they'll be down. I, I, I do think two sides we're about to talk about now. In Cork and Finn Harps, I think will be down around there. Maybe Shelburne and Sligo probably down around there. I think that I think that will be the battle of the bottom, really. Yeah, but yeah, the bottom four. I think Shell's doing anything to get, stay out of that bottom four. We're doing really well, I think. Mm. And I think Cork as well because they've basically got a whole new squad now, you know. And yeah, they've got the win now, which I didn't think they would get. The win, to be honest, but I wonder when Alec Brown with the goal, and it looked like the cross was buzzing. Yeah, it was. It looked like it was hopping as well. Even after the goal, didn't McGlade set it up from the corner? The shed end was packed, and again, they were delirious when it went in. Place went mad. It's a very important win for Cork. They've been struggling the first few weeks, especially after getting hockeyed by Rovers last Friday. It's very important for them to get a win like that. Yeah, I, it, it, I think it's worth noting as well is that obviously Finn Harps had a goal disallowed, and it was a fail. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, Liam Boston's okay now. Um, I think he's di- been discharged at a hospital. I don't know how long he's out for, but uh, it's great to see that he's he's back in full health. I suppose maybe not full fitness, but in full health. And um, the goal was rightly disallowed. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of people, even in Tallis Stadium, where, where I was, everyone around me had the scores, and they were quite shocked that uh, Cork were were winning the game 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, you see Harps recruiting so far this year as well has been brilliant. They brought in some brilliant players and they had a decent squad already anyway. Like, the trip alone for them could be could be a tough one as well. They're going literally the length of the country and I know that shouldn't really come into it, but it is a tough trip and not a lot of fans, like some fans did, but not having as many fans as you might do when you're playing away to say Sligo or Derry, you know, it could have an effect as well, but again, we don't know. Yeah, but I, I know that... Uh Shell's game obviously last week on Monday was called off and I know David Webster had to go up even though it was called off and then training the next day so even though the match was off they're still making like he's gone from Dublin up to Donegal then yeah. back down to Cork it obviously has an effect I think going that far and I don't know what Finn Harp's fan base has been like in terms of away games and stuff like that I don't know how many fans if they travel in their numbers I haven't Really, I haven't seen them so far this season yeah. to to make a judgment or make a call on it, and I haven't really seen any pictures or, or heard anything. Mm. But I wouldn't imagine they travel in too many numbers to really make the opposition in any way intimidated or anything like that. Whereas yeah. when they're at home, obviously they do yeah. make that they do make the difference for them at home because they've gotten some decent results, especially in the last year uh, over teams. So I think home form is going to be crucial for. Finn Harps throughout the season I think again for Cork as well I think home advantage is going to be key for them too because if Cork can get the fans behind him and back you know really buying into what Neil Fenn is going to do there I think that is going to be important throughout the season because again he is coming in there and he has essentially gotten rid of like the squad of 2017 to to now just, how many of them are, are still there Gerald Morrissey and maybe one or two more yeah but other than that, there's, there's not that many people there and it's been a big shift and he's brought in a lot of young players and he's trying to bring players through. So I think if I was a Cork City fan, I'd just be trying to stick with them at the moment and stick with what Neil Fenn's trying to do and just get behind them. It's, it's, it's the only thing to do. But they need to make turners cross a fortress because no team likes going there. I think Kyle Shepard said it, um, that no one likes going there. I think he said it to you, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, yeah. It's, it's, very tough place to go again it's another long trip for most teams especially it's um it's important they get results at home same with harps as well as you've just said as well if if they don't do that both sides could be in trouble see a big performance here from city tonight um what's your reaction to the match um fantastic um first half didn't really start off too well but we dug in you know Got fortunate with the disallowed goal, mm-hmm. and then when in no nil at half time, we just had to buckle up, just had to get ourselves together, encourage each other, and just get ready for the second half. We just came out fighting the second half, and I think it showed in the result. And uh, how much more difficult did the conditions make defending in that game? Was it, was it just very tough? Or? Um, of course, because the ball didn't bounce as much as you expected, so we just had to get there before the bounce and just had to adjust to the conditions quite early on because you can't let that affect your game. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously, look, a difficult weekend last weekend, but. Um, what was the change this week, do you think, to look very solid tonight? Was there more focus in training? I think it was just a fact of us just all getting together. Mm-hmm. Everyone believing that we can actually bounce back and we've actually got the quality, we can actually dig in as well, we can get involved, we can actually proper heart of the line, you know, mm-hmm. proper stuff, get digging and put ourselves up there and we can actually contend with any, any team, yeah. And obviously, look, you've uh, just moved to Cork, how are you settling in? Is it like in the city? Yeah, really nice city, lovely city, you know, I'm probably going to go out tomorrow and see a bit more of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and look, um, it's it's it was a. The, what was your reaction to the disallowed goal? Did you think you were fortunate with it, or how did it look from the pitch? I think it's always a disallowed goal. You've always mm-hmm. got to give the keeper the benefit of the doubt. It's a dangerous play. Keepers mm-hmm. coming from the stretch. You've always got to protect the keeper. Do you understand? And is uh, Liam alright after the yeah, challenge? Yeah, he is. He was talking whilst he was on the pitch, so okay. I think he'll get. He'll be soon ready back on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, and um, did you find it easier playing in the second half, playing the other direction, even though the goal might look a bit more boggy, or? What was the change in the second half? It seemed a much more, a lot of bite in the team in the second half. I think in the second half we just went on the front foot. We just mm-hmm. all wanted it. We all actually went and stepped forward and we pressed and we actually mm-hmm. got into them. And as you saw, they were kicking the ball off the pitch and just kicking it. And then we were actually just continually heading it, defending and just getting back on them. Yeah. And from a defender's perspective, well, from the fan, it didn't look like a, a poor defensive performance last night, but things seemed to go against you. Um, did you feel similar after the Shamrock Rovers game and the Dock game last weekend? Um, they have very good teams, mm-hmm. very, very good teams, and it just, it's on the night, it just didn't go our way. Yeah. It's as simple as that, I think, personally, on the night, it just didn't go our way. Just give us a quick reaction to the match tonight. Um, the boys dug in, absolutely mm-hmm. buzzing for the win. The fans deserve the win, we deserve mm-hmm. a win. 
I'm just over the moon that we've won the game for the fans. Yeah, and you had a, a good few chances yourself. Um, you came very close in the post. Yeah. Uh, did you think it was gone in? Oh, I had, a, I had a fair few. I thought I was at least going to score one, but as long as we got the result, that's all that matters. Yeah, and uh, obviously a tough weekend last weekend. What was the reaction in the dressing room to the results last weekend? Um, we just wanted, we just wanted to get going. Mm -hmm. So we came in, had the fighting spirit, and we just said, you know what, we need to get the three points. Mm -hmm. Went out there, worked hard. All the boys worked hard. Put in a shift. Got the three points. Absolutely. And um, with the pitch obviously not the best condition tonight. Did that affect you in the first half, or was it easier in the second half attacking that more boggy goal? Um, it was, it was, it was hard. The pitch mm. was very, very soft, but the boys dealt with the conditions mm. very, very easily. And yeah. And uh, how are you settling in Cork? Obviously, it's a new signing. Are you finding life all right? Yeah, I'm finding it very good. I'm loving it. I'm actually loving it. Loving Brilliant. it. And um, sorry, just one last thing is um, obviously a big game now against Pats on Friday. Do you think the team is ready now to build on this for the next game? Definitely, definitely. We've got the spirits high now. We're mm -hmm. just ready to crack on. We're going to keep going. Thank Let's you very much, Shane. Look, it's been Thank brilliant. Uh, best luck in the next game. Thank Cheers. You yeah. Well, what, um, obviously, there's a few games this week. You're going to Cabo. I'm going to be at Bowes uh, versus Shells. Jair and Gary Spain will be at St. Pat's against Cork City. And Kieran will be up in Drogheda where they take on UCD. There's a few other games taking place. But uh, if you see any lads around, you'll see us in our new Umbro <laughs> gear. Uh, don't don't be afraid to come say hello or whatever. And um, yeah, if you want any interviews with us as well, give us a shout and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching as always. If you liked the video, drop a like on the video. And if you didn't like it, drop a dislike. Tell us why in the comments. Though. Don't just dislike it and say nothing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks, lads.